You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. And, of course, we also lost restaurateur, model, author, B. Smith. She died on Saturday after a battle with Alzheimer's disease. According to her husband, Dan Gatsby, she was 70 years old. In addition to building restaurants and a home decor collection over the years, she was a fashion model, actress, broadcast talent, and best-selling cookbook author. In 1976, she became one of the first African-American women to appear on the cutter of Mad- cover of Mademoiselle magazine. B. Smith was style. Her syndicated talk show aired nationally on NBC stations for several years. She also ran three popular restaurants, including one here in Washington, D.C., she was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's at the age of 64 in 2013. Folks, um, again, two two amazing women. Uh, I knew B. Smith uh, very well. We're often dying with her and her husband, Dan. Uh, certainly was just so sad. I mean, just a, one of the most creative women uh, out there. Uh, and two pioneers in two different areas. I just say this. Um, with Ms. B. Smith, I think what she done was just absolutely remarkable. But when I think about you know, the, 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 the Alzheimer's disease and how black women are so affected by that. I think that her death will not be in vain. Number one, we'll be able to enjoy her creations and her innovation and her thinking for years to come. But also, we'll be able to bring some awareness to this disease for our culture and for our black women to be able to hopefully provide more money towards the research of research of Alzheimer's and things like that. And then we talk about a mathematician, a, a female black mathematician that is an icon, a celebrity face that we can see that actually do calculations. It just makes me feel good about just the women in America, that you know, the black women in America. So I think that having these people as role models, people that we can look up to, and their stories will never die um, just because they have so much that they've given to us and so much things that we can tangibly see for the rest of our lives. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I was grateful to be able to actually experience B. Smith's restaurant before it was gone at Union Station. One of the best, one of the best soul food places I've ever been to in my life. The food was amazing. Um, you know, rest in peace. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, her legacy is going to live on, you know, through her work. Um, in regards to uh, Catherine, let me tell you something. Black women have been a part of every major thing that's happened in this country. Um, without the advancement that came from NASA, without her calculations, we probably don't see a lot of the uh, technological advances that we got that came out of that whole era, that whole uh, mm-hmm. project and program. Black excellence at its best. Rest in power. Um, so first and foremost, I want to thank the panel for being here. We're going to end the show with this here. First of all, you want to support Rollmart Unfiltered. Go to rollmartunfiltered.com. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be in Charleston, South Carolina for the Democratic debate. Uh, and so we'll be broadcasting the show from there as well. We're going to end the show here in 2013. Actually, uh, uh, I interviewed um, uh, Dan and B uh, when they put out their book, Before I Forget, Love, Hope, Help, and Acceptance in Our Fight Against Alzheimer's. And this was my interview with both of them uh, on TV One's News One Now. She is one of the most creative people many of us have ever known. I mean, take your pick when it comes to fashion, when it comes to cooking, when it comes to restaurants and books and TV show and magazines and all that stuff. Uh, so imagine being a very creative, vibrant, busy entrepreneur, then all of a sudden uh, being struck with early onset Alzheimer's disease. How that all of a sudden changes your life, but not just uh, your life of B. Smith, but also her husband and business partner, Dan Gatsby. Alzheimer's, of course, is usually associated with folks uh, 65 and older. However, it can strike folks as, early, as young as their early 40s. Altogether, 5.4 million Americans suffer from Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. In fact, every 66 seconds, someone in the United States develops the disease. And African Americans are twice as likely to develop late onset Alzheimer's than whites. Now, instead of running from Alzheimer's and going into seclusion, B and Dan chose to go public in an effort to help others struggling with the disease. They've written about their experiences in the New York Times bestseller book, Before I Forget Love, Hope, help and acceptance in our fight against Alzheimer's. Uh, and joining us on the set right now is B. Smith, Dan Gasby. Uh, good to see uh, both of you. Always good to see you. Happy to be here. Uh, glad, 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 glad that you are here. Um, take us back 
to before you got a diagnosis? What, what, what was happening? What was well, happening? You know, well, well, first let me start off, and we're friends, and you know us for years, know the family. We had everything. We didn't need anything. We had come from nothing, made something, and our world was perfect. I could look across the room and talk to her with my eyes. We could walk into a room and light it up, mm -hmm. light each other up, light the audience up, or in a restaurant make people feel at home, as you've experienced. Mm -hmm. There was a point now that we have dealt, dealt with this that you look back in. In the book, I call little signs of difference. And those little signs are things that were atypical from someone who is sweet and wonderful and caring, where there may be bursts of outrage about something that didn't seem to be necessary, or repeating of a question more than one time in a rapid succession, or uh, asking for something that was no longer there or no longer realizable. And those things make you, you know, go, Hmm. But they don't make you go like the Arsenio. Right. They make you go WTF. <laughs> and that was now the thing that we know was the beginning. Mm -hmm. So Alzheimer's doesn't start like you turn a switch on or you catch a cold. It starts gradual like a storm. You don't know that it's going to be a rainstorm or if it's going to be sandy. But in the case of Alzheimer's, it is sandy because it changes everything and because the ability to do everyday basic things become more uh, difficult. That was the beginning, just little things. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we realized as we went and had the amyloid plaque test and had the cognitive test that this was the case, while Sweetie was at the, pain, the, the peak of what we know is her abilities to talk and deal with things, she said to me, I, I wanna tell people what I'm dealing with. I don't want people to define me, and I don't define myself. And that was the genesis for this book. Talk about that. When I first um, started the, um, the book, uh, it, everything was going good, and at some point, it just sort of... Became difficult. Yes. And, you know, Here's a woman who I, I called her the ultimate hyphenate because you could add this to this to this from mother. Right, and, and, and that's, that's probably, you know, I would, I would think, because look, my, my, um, my sister's husband, um, my sister's helping the care, she's a teacher helping to care for both of his parents. Dad first got Alzheimer's, then the mother developed Alzheimer's. Right. dealing with both of them. Mm -hmm. For you, I mean, you, were, you had... 30 balls juggling. I yeah. mean, and you were sitting here, look, I mean, I, I've been to your office and you're sitting here, I mean, you got the, the line of products and you got this and this and this and this and this. And so this, this, this creative mind that always kept things, remember this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden, things begin to change for you. Mm -hmm. How, to being that kind of creative person, person who's in control, who, uh, who understands all these different things, that had to be just, just a dramatic shift for you. It was, but I never want to stop. And, and at that time, you know, I was definitely not going to stop. And the, tr and the, tr the, 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 the trouble with that, to be honest, because this book is about being honest, both what she's dealing with, what mm -hmm. I'm dealing with, what we're dealing with together, is that, you know, you are the sum of who and what you do. And when you can't do it all, things start to unravel or things start to drop. And that is the point where there's tension, there's misunderstandings. Let me say, one of the reasons that we wrote this book was when we look back, I can imagine how many people have left other people because they didn't know that person wasn't dealing with something psychological, they were dealing with something biological or neurological. And, and bring that up, because I think this is, is very interesting. And nobody talks about this. You, well, absolutely. And also when you talk about married couples. Yes. We hear vows, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor. Through sickness. Through, through sickness and health. You've talked about coming from nothing, having riches, 
being better, wonderful life, and now all of a sudden, your life changes. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the real, that's the true test of a marriage and whether or not you commit it. There's no testimony without the test, my brother. <laughs> and you know what? If I never do anything but make sure that she, again, make sure that she's protected for as long as I, I breathe, I've done everything. That was a moment when he sent an urgent email and tweet out and text to a lot of us when you were in New York and he couldn't find you. Yeah. You, you went to mm -hmm. meet someone. Mm -hmm. and met a daughter. 17 hours. She walked for 17 hours in high heels from Midtown Manhattan to Harlem down to where the World Trade Center and Staten Island is over to Staten Island back we had people tell us she was singing with people because they were, you know, it was a night and it was the day, day before the day of Thanksgiving and people were out and having a good time. And she had on red high heel shoes and she had on a windbreaker and it was like sleeting. And she, we estimated she did a marathon and a 10K. Wow. But, you know, she's in great shape, but she, and she's a fighter. And the thing I've learned about this disease that is so devastating is that there's a war going on inside mm -hmm. of a person. It's an all-out frontal assault. And I call, it a, a, I call it an act of domestic terrorism because it devastates the person and those who they love. Hold tight one second. I got to go to a break. When we come back, we'll talk more with B. Smith and Dan Gatsby about their book. Before I forget, right here on News 1 Now on TV One. In charge and the even. That's it, y'all. That's it. All right. That was the interview with B. Smith and Dan Gatsby. Uh, prayers for Dan. Uh, I've I texted Dan. I offered him, uh, asked him to come on. Uh, he's still, of course, uh, uh, grieving. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's real hard. And let me, so let me say this here <clears throat> real quick. I've had a lot of people send me tweets saying Dan can go to hell because y'all talked about him dating this white woman, bring it to the house. How many of y'all have had to actually care for somebody with Alzheimer's? Not now a person out there commenting know anything about what was happening in their house before she, well, she got sicker. Nobody. I, I knew both of them. I know both of them. And I'm telling you, the literal pressure of... Um, the depression, the, the stuff, how his health began to deteriorate because of all of that of taking care of her. So when I tweeted for people to have prayers for Dan and for um, her daughter, I don't give a damn if y'all don't like what Dan Gatsby did. I really don't care. What I do know, because I saw it in the apartment in New York, I saw that dinner, that man loved that sister. And she loved him. And they were business partners. And y'all saying, oh, he's spending her money. He was president of the company. They built that company. And so, yes, Dan is a friend. B was a friend, and so we all mourn her loss, and so absolutely prayers for him and all who affected the loss of B. Smith. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, are you looking to enhance your leadership or that of your team in 2020? Well, you should join Dr. Jackie Hood Martin for her newest online course and mastermind group, How Successful People Think. She'll be your guide as you learn timeless leadership principles to apply to daily living. The offer expires on February 28th, that's this week. So register for or start the online course today. Go to www.livetolead.com forward slash Leesburg. Live, L-I-V-E, the number two, L-E-A-D dot com forward slash Leesburg. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. 
And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.